Hello guys, how are you doing? Welcome back once again to this channel where we bring you amazing content that is in relation to the entertainment industry. And uh, like I promised you guys, I will be bringing you uh, people that are established in this industry. Uh, so today I'm so lucky to host one of the amazing guys in this industry and uh, he's a comedian. I've known uh, Mendo for quite some time. We grew up together and this guy has managed to establish uh, one of the best brands in the comedy industry. He acts as Tichampamile, he acts as uh, Museveni and trust me, if you are an upcoming comedian, this information is going to be so helpful to you. Uh, Mr. Mendo, I'm so glad to, to host you. And first of all, thank you so much for having accepted my invitation. I believe that uh, at the end of this talk, uh, so many people will have understood how how you made it, how uh, how you managed to to come up with these amazing brands that uh, have caused people to smile over the years. I'm one of your fans. I follow you, and sometimes I've been acting with this guy, and uh, I've learned from him so many things. And uh, today. Uh, let's let, let's just switch. Let's just switch. switch. Uh, so please say hi to my to to the followers. Yes. Uh, hello. I'm glad to be here on uh, Watua K's TV. Yes. Yeah, my name is Mendo Seguja Habat or Tichampamire. Mm. Mm. So uh, basically, Mr. Tichampamire or Tichampamire, uh, what we are doing is we are trying to show a light to to people that want to understand how the the industry the comedy part of the industry works like if they are upcoming comedians people that look up to you for inspiration we just want to help them understand how this thing works how you've made it how you've managed to create these two amazing brands uh so basically i'll start by asking you just a simple questions along the way uh how did you come to know like how did you come to know uh that you're a comedian um uh, where i was in the village i used to uh, to to be with my grandmom, mm -hmm. so we used to listen to uh, 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 some of the presenters. Uh, that's uh, there was a guy called Salongo John, who was a news anchor on CBS. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, uh, my my grandmom used to have a radio a radio uh, for uh, she could listen to death announcements and uh, the, the presenter could uh, read out those who have died. So I got, I started admiring the voice of one of those presenters. Mm -hmm. So I started acting him. But uh, besides that, I used, uh, I, I used to be fun, funny at school. Mm -hmm. So from being fun, funny at school, I developed the idea of imitate, uh, doing mimicry or character imitation. Mm -hmm. They're doing the mimicry of people. That's how I came up with the idea of uh, mimicking personalities until when I started mimicking seven. Uh, then for Tichan um, uh I, I got a professional training at okay. American Comedy Institute in New York okay. where I told uh, my tutors to uh, mold me into something that, uh, uh, that I feel mm. uh, that is within my bone and that is the character of a teacher. So uh, one is a, uh, is, a, uh, is a talent from childhood, then the other one is a skill. So okay. From the, what I do as a teacher, of course I'm a professional teacher, I develop mm -hmm. the idea of acting as teacher and Pamere. But it all goes back to character imitation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you've talked about uh, how you took your your talent to school. Now, uh, if someone wants to, 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 to develop their talent, are there schools in Uganda that teach comedy? We don't have formal schools that teach comedy, mm -hmm. but uh, we have uh, people who can, uh, who, uh, people who can, uh, I don't know, we don't have formal schools, uh, you know when you talk about a school, uh, a school means a structure, Yeah. but we don't have such people, but we have people who can uh, nurture, uh, who can mentor, who can provide uh, mentorship uh, workshops for upcoming comedians. Because uh, uh, before going to American Comedy Institute and uh, even after, I still have people who can, uh, uh, whom I look at and they can mentor me like Pablo. Mm. So comedy is just about that. It's not like uh, having a structure where they are teaching comedy. 
yeah they are just uh, mentorship programs that's why even i went for american comedy institute it was uh, uh, those were just workshops though they had different schedules uh, throughout the year mm. uh, but not uh, a structured building that this is like a university for studying all schools okay yeah so uh <clears throat> what's the difference between because there are people that are naturally like they are funny and I don't know if it's true because someone may think that being funny naturally uh, qualifies you to be a comedian. Is mm. it true? Does it work like that? That if you well, uh, if the, funny early, the the first stage of comedy is uh, it stands uh, it starts with being funny. That's true. Okay. Being funny. There are two scenarios. Uh, you can be funny. Uh, uh, you can be funny. Uh, someone can be funny yet is not a comedian, and then there is also a comedian who is not funny. So. Uh, uh, the best, the right thing about comedy, you must be funny. If you're not funny, if people don't find you funny, then you can't be a comedian. Mm. A comedian is just a, a title, a, a title. It's the, when you professionalize your fun. Mm. That's the reason why there are some funny people who are not comedians, but mm. they stand higher chances of becoming comedians because uh, you, they, w when they are mentored, when they are skilled then they can turn in, uh, make it professional. Mm. So, because comedy is an art, it involves, a, a, it's a process. Mm. You don't just go on stage and do it, it starts with uh, building your craft. So, some people are naturally funny, but yeah, you have seen many people who are either funny in writing, uh, funny physically, but are never comedians. So, wow. uh, there, there is a difference between a comedian being funny. Some comedians, some people who call themselves comedians are not funny. Okay. But other people are funny, but yet they are not comedians. But uh, as someone who has ever mentored another, uh, other, uh, other people, mm -hmm. I believe that when someone is funny, he has higher chances of becoming a comedian. Wow, that's beautiful. Now you've talked about uh, mentorship, how you can someone someone can mentor you. Uh, I've I've had you one time like you were on an interview and you, you talked about someone being a comedian but they've not been mentored or they've not been uh, like they've not gone to any school of uh, like to be to be changed somehow because school changes you. So how do you advise someone that is uh, like what's the difference between someone that has gone to the school of comedy and someone that has just that is just using talent raw talent? Uh, the, uh, the, one, the other person who has been mentored uh, becomes, uh, is more professional, performs professionally than another person who has not been mentored. Mentorship takes different uh, areas, but uh, the, the other one who is mentored ha has higher chances of uh, stay, la lasting for, uh, sustaining uh, his career mm. in the arts than another person who just bumped into. Mm. It's not about having a talent. In mm. comedy, it's not about having a talent. In every profession I've seen, it's not about the talent. It's about uh, both the talent, uh, working hard, and uh, mentorship. We have seen f uh, f several footballers in the world who are talented, but because of lack of mentorship, lack of, uh, 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 yeah, I would call it mentorship, mm -hmm. they have not been able to make it. We, Brazil, Brazil had uh, players like Adriano, Libero Leite, Pato, Rubinho, uh, Ronaldinho, mm. all those guys uh, uh, were talented, but where are they now? Mm. Uh, most of them uh, just perished. Uh, the likes of Pato, uh, 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 Pato, Robinho, and uh, most probably Adriano Libero Leite was a he had a <laughs> talent, but because of that, because of lack of mentorship, they ended up just in perishing away. Mm. It's not about the talent. That's the reason why we had uh, people like, uh, uh, if it was about the talent without mentorship mm. or training, uh, we wouldn't have had people like uh, Messi. Messi was born talented, mm. but he had to go to La Masia Academy in Barcelona to become what he has become mm. today. If it, uh, if it wasn't that, then uh, how Messi wouldn't have been what he is right now. You can True. see that through that. True. And uh, the so. When you get mentorship, you have more chances because uh, through mentorship you get the notes. You know that in case you run out of content, you can mm. easily go back to what your tutor told you. Mm. That this and this. Every time you, because uh, uh, comedians are also human. Mm. Uh, sometimes you run out of content. You have run out of content, but still, if you remember what they told you, you can sit down and say, "Okay, let me open the notes and see 
uh, what did they tell me in circumstances where I'm running out of material. Wow. Mm. Well, uh, viewers, if you're out there and uh, you're enjoying this, please uh, remember that this is a channel that you, you you can subscribe to in case you need more comment, uh, rather more content. And I would also love to use this opportunity to tell you about Tichampamide's channel. I think it's called Tichampamide, basically. Tichampamide. So, run to his channel for, for beautiful content if you want to laugh, if you're stressed and you just want to, to, to have happiness in your heart, just run to that channel subscribe i'm going to put a link up there for you to subscribe easily just get there uh how often do you do you, uh up, upload content uh twice i think twice a week yeah twice a week that should be enough for you to be happy uh moving forward uh he's been talking about uh taking your talent i think it's not just about comedy but when you're talented just try to find a way of taking your talent to school or find someone that can nurture it uh, so that you become a better person at what you're doing. Uh, thank you so, so much, Mr. Ampamile. Uh, now, how do you get, like, how do you get ideas for your, for your, for your scripts, like, for, for the content that you shoot, the things that you come up, like, the comedy you do? How do you, do you, do you work with people? Do you come up with these things? Like, how do you come up with content? Now, if you're an upcoming comedian, you need to understand how people come up with ideas because this is an established guy. If you're to mention uh, top five comedians in Uganda, his name should come up. Okay? So I'm talking to someone that is established. So be well assured that the content that he's giving us is proven. So how do you come up with content, Mr. Ampamide? Yeah, um, it's about research. It's okay. about research. It's about uh, interpretation of your craft. What first of all, you have to know what uh, what your audience likes. Uh, what uh, why do why does your audience follow you? Uh, once you realize that this is what my audience uh, wants, that's when you come up. You, you do research accordingly. Uh, so you have to know what your audience wants. If your audience wants this, if your audience wants uh, this, then you you base your research on that. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve Rosenfield told me, uh, the director of American Comedy Institute, that uh, uh, he used to emphasize about research, research, research. Uh, content is everywhere. The world has content. And... Uh, how do you get this content? Many people write posts, many people say this, things happen around the world. But if something is not, uh, if someone says a joke and that person is not a comedian, then it's your joke. I said hmm. that if someone, you find someone says something or he has posted something on social media and that person is not a, a comedian, hmm. that is your joke. Take it, write it. So that's how you, we come up with our ideas. The first thing uh, uh, there is a uh, there is a uh, was was it Jim Carl? Uh, there is some uh, Jim Carl. Uh, there is a certain comedian. He's a, a writer. Okay. He said something that uh, he was defining a comedian. That a comedian is a person with a third eye who sees things with an ironical detachment. An okay. ironical detachment. The way we, for us as comedians, we, as a comedian, you must have a third eye. We are not normal. We are abnormal. We, you must have a third eye. The way you see things is not the way the audience must see things. You should always have see things uh, with a third eye, but interpret those things with an ironical detachment. Uh, uh, another one called Greg Dean said that uh, well, our role as comedian is to flip flap. Uh, things in the to flip flap things in the world flip flapping is how you s when people see something uh, uh, upwards for you you have to sit downwards that is what makes you different otherwise that's the reason why people should come and watch you on stage so in terms of content as I've told you do content is everywhere however not every content matters. Mm. It, you must know what your audience wants. That's the reason why you come across uh, funny articles in the papers and you look at it as a nice joke. But if it doesn't fit you, don't force it. There are some jokes I normally see and I feel like, oh, um, uh, that's oh, can I can I do that joke? But that's I, where I was going to ask you a question. That are there some topics that a comedian should avoid? 
Yeah, there are some topics because I, that what defines your comedy uh, matters a lot in content creation. Mm. So, uh, basket mouth will come and do a show, and uh, and I will, I, I will I will look at how he's organizing his script. But if that script is not what I do, even if uh, the content is nice, you will give me a joke and say, eh, "There is a joke I found. Uh, there is a man who did this." There are some comedians who narrate stories. Uh, hey, uh, one day I was doing this, and then after I crossed this. But if mine is about teaching. I will never go on stage and write uh, on a blackboard. Uh, one day I did this because that's not what defines me as a teacher. Mm. What defines me is teaching. I must be teaching. So sometimes you come across that content and you, uh, you uh, unless you tell it to your friend, you can't do it. So it's about making research. Content is everywhere. The world has a lot and a lot and a lot. Wow. You can. Uh, you don't. Uh, what you need to do. As a, 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 an upcoming comedian, don't steal people's jokes, as I told you, mm. unless that person is not a comedian. Mm. If he's not a comedian, that's your joke. But if he's a comedian, don't steal. But the most important about that is to admire, uh, then uh, uh, think, uh, uh, create your own. You, uh, we only look at the, those comedians or other comedians to get inspired. Yeah. And then uh, create your own content from from what you have seen mm. but don't steal people's jokes it's mm. a crime who inspires you is very important don't steal people's jokes and do research okay uh thank you so much for for that uh moving on you've talked about uh being a teacher and I'm sure that there are several, I don't know how many schools you reach out to, but you are a teacher of history, European history. And my question is, we would be, we could be having people out there who are having uh, talents, but they put aside their professions to concentrate on talent. But you are one person that manages talent and you've managed your profession as a teacher. And you're good with your teaching because I remember over the years you've been producing good results and good grades at uh, Standard High School. Uh, how do you handle that too? How do you handle your profession and your talent? Yeah, it's uh, the code of conduct. Uh, uh, everything is timetable. Uh, teachers uh, uh, have timetables. I do everything according to its time. Okay. If it's school in the morning, it will be school. If it's comedy in the evening, it will be <clears throat> The only area where they are intertwined is what I do is t is, is about how I do it because I'm a teacher by profession and I'm a teacher in comedy. Uh, I, I do teaching as a character. Mm -hmm. So uh, one works for the other. When I'm in school, I, if I find a joke, I write it from the staff room. When I'm free, I go to the library. When I'm interacting with the students, I still get jokes. I still get humor. Every funny thing that happens to school. So these are this is the way the two can work together. Mm. Uh, besides, uh, but outside that, if it wasn't about that, then it's about following what you're supposed to do. If it's time for school, you I have to be at school. If it's time for, so I time table tabled myself. I knew that when I'm um, I'm starting school on Monday. I know that on Monday I will be at Standard High School. On mm. Tuesday I'm not teaching. That means I will be at the theater. It's about programming yourself. Okay. I know that this is at this time. This is at this time. So that so goes for discipline. For uh, in everything, you ma uh, as an artist, I might want to put on differently when I'm at theater. Uh, so sometimes uh, it happens like uh, when you dress like a teacher, and then you go to national theater as a teacher. Mm. So. Sometimes uh, it interrupts the other. Every every uh, department uh, affects the other. But at the end of it all, when I know that on demand I'm supposed to be at standard, I remain at standard. Mm. Yeah. So it's about being disciplined and following a certain yeah. routine. Wow. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, now, what are some of the challenges that you've you've faced during your journey as a comedian? Because I'm sure. If there are upcoming comedians watching this, they would love to know some of the challenges you've, you've encountered along the way. Well, I hadn't encountered a lot of challenges as far as comedy is concerned, but mm. uh, these are general challenges, lack of professionalism in the mm. industry. Uh, it has affected us as an industry where, whereby uh, 
the the uh, the uh, the audience out there uh, define comedians as one. If uh, comedians, some comedians are vulgar, they will know that comedy in Uganda, they are all vulgar comedians. Mm. So that is a very big challenge on personal brands because uh, you have to prove to other people that you are not among those who are dirty, who are vulgar. It costs you uh, sometimes when uh, they book you, they say, ah, but uh, uh, why don't we also include a comedian on the program? Then they feel like, uh, but uh, comedians in Uganda are vulgar, what? Yet you are not part of the other vulgar mm. department. So mm. that's a very big challenge. Uh, then uh, of still lack of uh, professionalism, uh, uh, people stealing jokes, uh, lack of enough writers. Actually, we don't have comedy writers in Uganda because uh, there are some comedians who are talented in writing. But uh, you would feel that if we had such people concentrating on writing, mm. a challenge, the challenge is our economy, they feel like uh, if I only write, I will like, compete with another who is performing on stage. That's the reason why we have the writers are the same as comedians, although it uh, depends on how you are trained. For example, me, I know how to write and perform mm. my own jokes mm. but there are others you feel like eh, this one wasted a lot of time in on stage yet is good at writing so those people would have been uh, very important to the industry okay um, the perception as I've told you about comedy that one uh, I've told you about it um, uh, there is no competition Steve come I would have talked about competition but there is no competition in comedy mm. in Uganda we have not reached that level uh, compared to other countries. Um, uh, politics uh, is very important. Uh, politics and, and uh, talent, politics mm. and comedy, it has uh, created a very big uh, difference or line in the comedy industry where some people have taken preferences in political ideolo ideologies so to some of us uh, if you believe uh, to the, uh, okay it in, in this case uh, politics has entered into comedy just like how it entered into music so mm -hmm. at the end of it all we had a group of fans who didn't mind about uh, with uh, politics but they have ended up doing this uh, entering also into politics uh, alongside comedians in this sense for example if you have awards if uh, you are nominated in certain awards and uh, as you are nominated in certain awards they tell you to look for fa voter, uh, votes mm. you might post on social media but under under this modern social media that we have if you don't support a certain uh, uh, political ideology mm. people won't 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 give you support mm. people won't vote for you mm. they would say ah, let's vote for the other one because he supports what what we what others want mm. so at the end of it all there someone says i would have supported you but you support this mm. i would have supported you but you act as this so at the end of it all uh, for example there are some awards uh, that are coming soon Mama but uh, but uh, under these awards you might see that you have very few very few votes but others are having over 500 votes why because these are the people who have sung songs because they came out and said for us we support the person who are, we are supporting so at the end of it all people don't care whether they are supporting based on the talent mm. but for them they are supporting based on the political uh, affiliation. affiliation of mm. the other the other uh, or, 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 or the other comedians mm. so at the end that's how politics has ended up dividing and uh, uh misinterpretation of comedy people have not understood comedy that's why when we have categories of comedians you find out uh, that uh, uh they can place an english comedian under the category of uh, the rest yet when you look at over 10 out of those 10 only one person is an english comedian and uh, based on the region you will have those comedians they will say ah those when we are the funniest yet you cannot uh, the, the issue is uh, did you understand uh, my jokes because mm. if you place a, you, a, an English comedian to a Luganda comedian people who are voting are very different social media True. is misused by different people or mm. is used mm. by different people so those are some uh, I think the, the most of the challenges are concerning the craft not wow. others okay yeah so how do you handle fame and fans it depends on how, uh, where you came from 
if you grow up uh, knowing that you come from a, a humble background you will always remain humble at the end of it all if uh, something like fame comes along you know how to handle it then uh, the christian part of it you just know that okay this and this uh, at the end of it all i must not do this because of the christian background mm. but uh, the, the, it depends on how you interpret uh, your career or your career of uh, specifically of comedy mm. if you know that these are just uh, a three things you don't need to comedy is not music you don't need to uh, like uh, to feel like okay i won't be able to sit and watch football because with this uh, in a certain area because people will say banange those things happen to musicians but because comedy brings people closer to their audience for us when we are performing audience is part of us so those people if that's the reason why you can remain behind you chill you have a drink uh, knowing that these are the same audience but for musicians it's a totally different thing mm. for us it's normal you you just take it normal you of course of course you have must have limits you must have limits mm. but at the end of it all oh, this uh, this is comedy comedy is creates a good relation a closer relationship with the audience that's why uh, even if you become famous you just know that my fame depends on my fans mm. hey. Wow, thank you so much. We are about to finish, uh, but I just want to know uh, what have you done as a person? Like, have you brought up any upcoming comedians? Like, have uh -huh. you nurtured uh, anyone? Yeah, yeah. on uh, you know, mentorship, uh, as you said, we have done informal mentorship, formal and informal. Mm. Upon uh, returning from American Comedy Institute, I organized uh, comedy workshops and a comfort comedy clinic mm. uh, that is comedy for transformation alongside Pablo. And we nurtured, uh, we mentored over 30 young comedians. Uh, some are still in the industry, others opted to do what they wanted just like how you graduate and then you do other things but we mentored them others are comedy organizers uh, we did that workshop at national theater and uh, those people have become uh, important in the industry besides those workshops there are many people who have consulted us someone comes uh, be, uh the theater you mentor that person you tell that person do this and this and this mm -hmm. others are comedy either there is a maker collins uh, he was a student at at greenlight high school zana uh, he looked at me he used to consult me and he's now a great mc and a comedian so whether formal or informal we have done our part wow mm -hmm. that's amazing so uh one of my last questions is like there could be people out there and they are not so friends with the top comedians that you you always uh, around mm. uh, would you please kindly like not everyone has a teaching spirit mm. and teaching is is an inborn thing like a teacher must have certain qualities so would you kindly mention some of the the guys that you work with that have a teaching spirit that if someone out there wants to be nurtured they can go to to such people who people that you think are professionals and uh the other question would be do they charge money um yeah i uh, have different categories of people depending on what young comedians are looking for mm. uh, to female comedians we have few comedians we have few female comedians in uganda but uh uh, uh what i can say for example kansime is uh is a role model to the girls and uh, boys mm. uh but as i told you each one has a department like it depends on what you want mm. you might be uh interested in uh, uh digital comedy you might be interested in uh marketing you might be interested in comedy writing comedy performing uh, you might be interested in uh, having a uh, 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 running comedy website, running comedy on on, on social on, on 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 TV, things like that. So it depends. Uh, I have Kwezi Kaganda is good at uh, comedy writing. Mm. Pablo is good at mentoring. Um, uh, Christian comedy. Uh, I have Bob, Bob and laptop. Uh, things concerning YouTube, uh, Kansime is also good. I can also do that. Mm. Uh, things concerning uh, um, uh, because it it also depends on the type of comedy. 
uh, wheat, uh, there is uh, buffoonery, there is uh, uh, character imitation. Mm. Uh, if, char- if, you, if you have a talent in uh, using your voice to interpret characters, I can help you. Mm. If you want comedy based on co- uh, uh, comedy management, Mohanji is good at comedy management. If you want to organize events of comedy, mm. Muhanji is good at that. Mm. If you want uh, comedy concerning YouTube, that like if for you, you want to upload videos, do videos, go out there and you do videos, can mm. see me, can do that. Okay. So it all depends on the type of comedy and what you want from the person. Wow. Mm. So when they are coming to you guys, do, do, is there like a fee they are supposed to pay? Uh, it depends on uh, it depends on comedians. Mm. It totally depends on. I will not say because we don't have a fraternity where they say, okay, we are the mentor. Each one is mentoring differently. And they, I will never ask for a coin as long as I'm free. Mm. It's okay. I can do that because I've done so at uh, National Theatre free of charge. Wow. So how do people reach out to you in case they're interested? Yeah, National Theatre is always our home for artists. Okay. When you go to National Theatre, you ask for Ticham Pamire. Wow. They can just, everyone knows me from there. Wow. Yeah, you, you, uh, yeah, that's the simplest. You like, oh, you even go on social media, you send me in uh, messages, okay. everything. But once you go to National Theatre, it's just like when you go to CBS, you look for Abe Michiwi. When you go, you, like that, you wow. can, yeah, that's the best. I'm really loving this. So guys, if you have any questions that you might want to ask to be asking these guys, uh, leave them in the comment section. Uh, as we are rounding up, I would love to ask my, my guest today uh, to do just two things for us. One, uh, uh, some advice you can give some advice to to upcoming uh, comedians or anything that you want to talk about you can uh, uh, tell us about the other social media handles because we talked about just uh, YouTube but there's uh, Facebook and others that you may be you may build uh, on <laughs> yeah the first thing um, how in order to become a successful comedian um, you must be funny you must be creative you must be original original originality uh, uh, differentiates you from others mm. you must be authentic mm. or you must be genuine being genuine is uh, uh, b- uh, being genuine is being sure of what you're saying it's just like when you go on stage but ba- say this when you have never even made research about them you have <laughs> that common thing uh, you look at the guy mm. that's not being genuine you must be creative you must know the wave of comedy you must be alert if mm. comedy says now it is more on this you must also go with you must go with the wave of of the industry mm. um, as I said you must be original Monto or original uh, helps you a lot because it, it makes you own your craft if you depend on uh, I learned it from this one you have seen many comedians uh, those comedians were not original at the end when you are not original but just uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, raising up from someone who's craft you can't manage comedy. That's the reason why we have seen many people uh, when they go on stage and you know, hey, this one plays acts like this. Mm. Uh, this one, this yeah, one is jokes, and I like true. the other one is jokes. Mm. The same applies to music. If you come from someone's music, either they will notice and say, na ye, challenge this one sings like the other mm. one. So be original, create your own craft. You will die with your own craft. Mm. I've acted in music for 17 years. And I've never run out of content. Everyone looked at me and said, hey, this guy, people will get tired. People have never got tired of me. It is only the regime that will change mm. and say, okay, that regime has gone. Mm. But in terms of content, because I owned my character, I was original from the start, mm. I nurtured it. If it was uh, like I, I, I did this, people would have said, ah, now you know, uh, Zanyanga, Gondi. Now, hey, because there are some people who are acting mosey like a David Tama, but I created my. Oh, I, I was original from the start. Yeah, you took the originality is very important, especially to young comedians, because you have a long way to go. A long way to go in the sense that 
what the foundation if you build your foundation of comedy on originality you will die with your character you will die with your career you will die with your brand because the foundation is very important but if you build on the foundation on some people's jokes like when I've seen scenarios where they invite comedians for an end of year party and then they list down like five comedians they say Kati oh no uh, if we bring uh, two Luganda comedians okay they all speak Luganda but what what if we are bringing this one mm. then why should we bring this one mm. because oh no uh, says the same thing as the other mm. one Kati Ate then uh, if uh, if we bring this one okay uh, if we bring this and I on as a young one and they are all in Uganda. But if you have a craft along all those comedians they bring, they will say, Ah, we need a we need a teacher and family. Yeah, oh, we need a, this because you have you own it. Mm -hmm. No, you, you have a you, you compete against yourself. The most important thing in comedy, as of another tip, don't compete, uh, don't make it a competition. The worry where you to man, go and do this. No, compete against yourself to better yourself don't say i want to be and in comedy don't uh, it's okay you can be someone can be your role model but don't say i want to be like basket mouth mm -hmm. just say i want to be my uh, 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 bet, i want to better myself create your own brand don't mm -hmm. say i want to be like consumer you will put yourself on pressure Kumpiting. I want also to do Ojaka Kana, you know, Ojaka Kano Tanso, Okube, Okuita Makono, Yaganangi Kubera Kansim. Mm. The end you will start acting Kansime, you will start doing like Kansim and Chijaku affecting Amumas. People will say, As a younger Kansim. Mm. Nehugu creating a chin to cho. Be by your research, as I've told you, research, 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 rehearse, research, rehearse, go on stage. Know what you want, look for how the ways of getting it do it mm. that is the most important wow mm. wow thank you so much so social media handles uh teacher family on facebook teacher family on instagram teacher family on youtube teacher family on twitter wow that's beautiful mm. so go there follow him watch his content uh i know you'll be inspired so anything for us um uh, it's normally an advice i give to people um uh, it's a it's a, a rhyme. I normally use it and I love it. That uh, uh, it's I normally create rhymes that we end with uh, NT. Uh, this is a special announcement mm. and it's very important. Mm. We should be proud of our continent. Mm. Being black is not an embarrassment. Mm. It's God's arrangement for us to have a black pigment, which makes us so different unique and intelligent wow. however we shouldn't be silent on the issues of our continent especially national development youth are looking for employment uh, 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 youth are looking for employment uh, drugs are insufficient our leaders are never consistent they promise but no fulfillment my humble request to the president and the members of parliament <laughs> think about the people you represent by offering them what they want they have run out of patience uh, uh, before they become impatient uh, uh, think about the people you represent before they force you into retirement mm -hmm. like Mugabe the former president wow 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 thank you so so much for for being a part of uh, this show uh, it's been an honor to host you thank you for the words uh, of encouragement the words yep. of advice I know people have uh, have really got so much from this interview. Yeah. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, I'll be bringing you more more content, more more guys in the industry. Uh, if you want me to host anyone, please put it in the comment section. Remember to subscribe. Remember to like and to share. Peace out.